Uh, good afternoon. I'm Lapsanta, a physiotherapist student from Allied Health Sciences, Faculty of Medicine, University of Colombo. First, I would like to thank you, Asia Pacific Academic Consortium for Public Health Conference in 2020 for giving me this valuable opportunity. My research topic is a study on prevalence and factors associated with flat feet in a selected group of female nurses in NHSL. Foot is complex in both its structure and function. It is divided into three main parts as tarsal, metatarsal, and phalanges. The bones of the foot create three foot arches, such as medial longitudinal arch, lateral longitudinal arch, and transverse arch, which are supported by ligaments and muscles. The three foot arches intersect and interrelate with each other. Therefore, failure at one leads to dysfunction of the others. Flat foot is a postural deformity in which the foot does not have a normal medial longitudinal arch when standing, and the arches of the foot collapse with the entire sole and contact with the ground completely or near completely. Factors such as age, gender, weight, family history, and type of shoe wearing during childhood and urban residence increase developing flat feet. Adult acquired flat foot is a disease which progresses due to mechanical degeneration of soft tissue structures in the foot. It occurs due to arthritis, neuromuscular disease, trauma, ligament laxity, obesity, and dysfunction of posterior tibia tendon. The most common etiological factor for adult acquired flat foot is dysfunction of the posterior tibia tendon. Literature shows that most of the research have been done on the prevalence of factors associated with flat feet on preschool age children and school children. There are few studies regarding acquired flat feet in adults. Therefore, this study would fulfill the above gap in the literature. The specific objectives of my research are to study the prevalence of flat feet and to study the relationship between the factors such as body weight, age, prolonged standing, and family history with flat feet. The methodology of this study is, now we move on to the methodology. It is a hospital-based cross-sectional study. Randomly, I have selected 100 female nurses from 20 wards in NHSL between the age of 25 to 55 years. I have used short self-administered questionnaire to collect data such as age, family history, and number of hours standing per day. The plant arc index and normalized navicular height truncated measurement were used to assess flat foot condition. Data collection was done by using electronic weighing scale, ruler, Harris mat, standard stadiometer, non-slip mat, ink, and white paper. Finally, the data was analyzed using SPSS version 23 using descriptive statistics and chi-square test. According to the data analysis, the PAI showed that 31% had bilateral flat foot and 13% had unilateral flat foot. However, the NNHD method showed that 38% had bilateral flat foot and 4% had unilateral flat foot. There were 13% who were found that found to have bilateral flat foot from both methods, although no factors were associated with, although no factors were found to be significantly associated with flat feet on the NNHD method. BMI, age, and family history was significantly associated with flat feet in the PAI method. Only BMI was significantly associated with those who had bilateral flat foot from both methods. According to the results, this study found a 13% prevalence of bilateral flat foot in female nurses in NHS. And also, there's a relationship between BMI with bilateral flat foot. Finally, I would like to thank you, my research supervisors, Professor Saru Jasing and Dr. Dushanti Jawaldhar, for the guidance. Thank you.